This video is going to serve as an introduction to a series of videos about Seneca Rocks, a very interesting place in the Appalachian Fold Thrust Belt. It's located in eastern West Virginia. If you're a geology student uh, in eastern North America, particularly in the mid-Atlantic region, you've probably heard of Seneca Rocks uh, if you haven't had the chance to visit it on a field trip. Uh, if you're a climber in eastern North America, you've also probably heard of Seneca Rocks. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to actually climb there. It's a very interesting topographic feature. Uh, I guess you describe it as, as sort of a fin of sandstone sticking up out of, out of the surrounding valley. Uh, it's a vertical outcrop of Silurian Age sandstone, and in some cases it's actually beyond vertical and has been overturned towards the foreland. And when I refer to Seneca Rocks, being vertical, I'm talking about a feature sort of like you see here. Uh, this asymmetric anticline has a nearly vertical forelimb, and you can imagine motion on this thrust actually rotating this vertical forelimb in that direction towards the foreland and actually overturning these beds. Now in the case of Seneca, it's almost purely vertical, and that's what gives it such a striking appearance when it stands out in contrast against more erodible rocks that are located in a valley behind it and a valley in front of it. Now, the reason I choose Seneca Rocks is that it's a very direct and easily seen expression of the role of erodibility and structure in developing the landscape we see today in the deeply eroded Appalachian Fold Thrust Belt. The Silurian sandstone is very resistant. Uh, the shales and carbonates surrounding it are much less resistant and so those vertical beds stick up in very, very strong prominence and produce this big fin type structure that has hundreds of feet of relief and is an outstanding spot uh, for climbing or even sort of hiking and scrambling the top just to take a view out over the surrounding valley. Now, the key to understanding development of Seneca Rocks and why it looks like it does is to be able to understand the impact of very significant erosion, uh, literally the removal of kilometers of material from kilometer scale compressional structures of the type you see represented in this model. Uh, in the humid temperate Appalachians, sandstones are very resistant. They support ridges, shales and carbonates make valleys, and the structural pattern interacting with erosional processes is what actually produces the topographic features that we see. So when I'm talking about the vertical forelimb, I'm referring to something like this, the less steeply dipping back limb that makes a ridge that sort of looms over Seneca rocks. We feature something like this, and I actually drive up to a very high overlook that allows you to look down on Seneca rocks, and that overlook is the result of the very base of a big broad syncline capping a mountaintop that's actually the highest peak in West Virginia. So if I were to draw a, a representative erosional surface that would be something like a modern topographic profile, if we were to deeply erode this model fold thrust belt, it would look something like what I'm going to try to draw here while holding on to the camera. Okay, so bear with me. So there's the topographic high in the base of the syncline. That would be Seneca Rocks, the ridge behind it, a couple more ridges, and then another, another valley. And again, this is, just, this is just intended to be illustrative, but the key to drawing a synthetic erosional surface like this is setting some layers to represent resistant beds and others to represent non-resistant beds. So, Seneca Rocks right here is developed on this little blue layer. We'll say that's a very resistant sandstone layer. All this has been eroded away, but you still have that back limb outcrop supporting a higher and less steeply sloped ridge. We'll say this other blue layer, stratigraphically higher, is a resistant sandstone. And where it caps this mountaintop, it produces a very, very high and very resistant plateau that's now actually hundreds of meters above Seneca Rocks. And the key to being able to drive up here and look down on Seneca Rocks is that you know that a lot of this material has to be missing because the deformation that produced this syncline requires that 
there used to be rock here. There used to be a complete wedge that was actually capable of transmitting compressive stress further into the foreland. So by being able to stand up and look down on a Seneca Rocks type feature, you can actually see the effects of this large scale erosion that's occurred over, well, probably 250 million years or so. The, the pace of that erosion, uh, when most of it happened, is still something that's not particularly well known, but certainly a lot of rock is missing uh, from the Appalachian fold thrust belt. So keep in mind, it's asymmetric anticline structure, steep forelimb, less steeply dipping back limb, broad syncline further into the foreland, and when I'm talking to you about these features, I'm standing down here at first looking at Seneca rocks, and then I'm standing up much higher on the flanks of spruce knobs so that I can actually look down onto this breached anticline. So stay tuned, check out the upcoming videos, and I'll later on return to this model and also show you how to find Seneca rocks on Google Earth.